you know, a lot of towns don't want you to have a 24-foot metal giant on your house. It's frowned upon in certain areas. <laughs> My name is George Edgren. Uh, I live in Wild Rose, Wisconsin. I build pretty much whatever anybody wants me to build. If you want it done, there's a will, there's a way. It's like a small metal art park. You don't have to buy anything. You can just walk through and enjoy it, or if you like a specific piece, you can just purchase it. When I first started out as a kid, I worked in construction uh, with my father and grandfather a lot. And then through the years, I knew I was into art a lot, but uh, you're not gonna get a full-time career doing art. So I went into school for metal fabrication, and I never would have dreamed that this is where it would have turned out. Okay, the elephant started off as a carnival ride rotting out in somebody's yard, and I found it and brought it home. I repainted it, and it actually used to drive around. Kids loved it. I built it just because I thought it was hilarious. I guess I always knew that I enjoyed building things. Ever since I could hold any kind of tool in my hand, I was pretty much helping my father. One of my parents' favorite stories was my dad gave me a sanding block and a piece of wood and told me to get out of his way, and I was real little. So next thing you know is I'm sanding his brand new paint job on a Ford Bronco that he had just bought. This specific piece started when a friend of mine gave me a front end of a motorcycle, the front fairing specifically, and I'm like, oh, that needs to be a, a dragon. And the eyes are actually where the headlights go. Uh, this motorcycle is called Death. Uh, specifically because when I had had it, I was actually riding with a buddy of mine and he actually died on his bike when he was next to me. So then that was my way of showing how I grieved. My best pieces are always the most emotional ones. Something inside you that just says that it needs to be built. I just did anything and everything that I could to make sure I had every detail the way that I wanted it. I made the pegs to look like hands so it actually holds your feet. The shifter arm is actually a hand, so every time you're shifting, it's like you're shaking hands with your friend kind of thing. When I build everything, nothing can be normal, so instead of normal hand controls with on, off, life is on, death is off, and scream is the actual starter ignition. That way you can't steal it. The odds of knowing what that means are slim to none. When I was building the coffin, I needed to make sure that anybody could actually fit in the coffin, so I measured one of the biggest guys that I knew just to make sure, so he tells everybody that he knows that this is his custom coffin. Every skull on here, I had actually done with a TIG welder. A few friends of mine took me off to the side one day and they're like, you know, not too many people can sculpt with a welder. I mean, sculpting in general is, can be a feat, but then you can sculpt with a welder. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that is pretty neat, I guess, when I think about it. Well, the coolest thing I ever made was a 24-foot robot replica in my driveway. So this is the big guy. I just built it because I thought it would be a neat piece for everybody to enjoy. It took me two months and I worked full time, so I would work anywhere in between four o'clock and nine o'clock when it got dark. I actually had to build a scaffolding around it and then I had to strong arm all the pieces up there by hand. I'd just wrap a chain around each piece and pull it up. There's a couple close calls, but overall it made it up. A lot of people ask me if it was made 100% of car parts, and I tried to, but there's not enough structural metal in most car frames to give you that kind of structure. Most of the car is there. The doors are his stomach, and the, the front end would be his chest plate. Tires are his shoulders. The feet are doors. Well, mostly doors. I've got a lot of sheet metal that I had put on it myself. I had just quickly formed. I've got uh, hydraulic lines run a little here and there to make it look like it was all functional, because that would be very cool, but take a lot of money to make it functional. A lot of people have asked me if I could make it functional. I'm like, I don't make enough money. But if I do, it'll be one of my first priorities. A friend of mine told me one day, you know, George, you're living the dream. And I laughed at her and I go, well, how do you figure? And she says, well, you're making art and you're selling it. You're living the dream. A lot of towns don't want you to have a 24-foot metal giant on your house. It's frowned upon in certain areas. <laughs> I think most of the neighbors are actually, they think it's pretty cool. So usually people are pretty decent with me having a pile of junk in the yard for a brief moment of time, sometimes a month. 
A lot of people ask me if the big robot's for sale, and everything's for sale. Of course, if the right price comes along, you let it go, you build another one. My 24-foot robot replica that I built in my driveway is the coolest thing I've ever made. My name's Guy, I'm the creator of the show. Thanks so much for watching. A big thanks to George for having us there. And please subscribe, we have got more episodes coming up soon.